Hi friends, in this video, we will talk about metformin. What is metformin? It is an oral antidiabetic drug. It belongs to the bigonide class and it is the only drug available in this class. How does it act? It has a lot of actions, but its primary action is to activate the enzyme AMP dependent protein kinase also called AMPK. So let's look at the primary action. Metformin activates AMPK in the liver, therefore it blocks hepatic gluconeogenesis, therefore it results in decreased glucose production by the liver. It has a lot of other actions such as it causes increased glucose uptake, increased insulin sensitivity, increased fatty acid oxidation and decreased intestinal glucose absorption. An important point to note is that unlike many other anti-diabetic drugs, Metformin does not cause the release of insulin and therefore it does not cause hypoglycemia. Let us have a look at the adverse effect. Metformin is generally well tolerated. However, the most common adverse effects are those of the gastrointestinal system. These occur in 10 to 25% of patients and includes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal discomfort and metallic taste. These are transient in nature and usually abate with time. However, they may be decreased by starting with low doses of metformin or taking metformin along with the meals. The other adverse effect includes vitamin B12 deficiency. It usually occurs on long-term therapy and is probably due to malabsorption of vitamin B12. Although these are manageable adverse effects, however, one major concern is lactic acidosis. Although this is rare, but it is a very serious adverse effect. Lactic acidosis occurs more commonly in patients with renal failure. Before moving to lactic acidosis, it is worth noting that 1. Metformin is not metabolized in the body and 2. Metformin is excreted unchanged by the kidneys. So let us see what happens in renal failure. In renal failure, when the patient's kidney is impaired, the metformin excretion is decreased. This results in increase in metformin levels in the blood. We have already discussed that the primary action of metformin is to block hepatic gluconeogenesis. We also know that the main substrates for gluconeogenesis are lactate, alanine and glycerol which are converted to glucose in the liver. So once metformin levels starts rising in the blood due to renal failure, it impairs or hampers hepatic utilization of lactic acid. This leads to an increased level of lactic acid in the blood. This may increase the risk of lactic acidosis in the patient. But risks apart, metformin has many distinct advantages over other antidiabetic drugs, such as it is an insulin sparing drug, which means that it has no direct effect on insulin secretion. Therefore, it does not cause hypoglycemia. It also does not cause weight gain. So it is preferred in obese diabetic patients. Due to these glaring advantages, metformin is the first line treatment for type 2 diabetes mellitus. How is it used in these patients? It may be given either as a monotherapy, which means that it can be used alone, or it can be given in combination therapy, where it can be combined with virtually every other drug used in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Hence, it may be combined with sulfonylurea, repaglenide, thiazolidine deons, or insulin. Thanks for watching. If you find this video useful, please like, share, and subscribe among your friends and colleagues.